Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be continuing to work on the shop interface for our game. Now today's focus is going to be getting the uh, shop interface displayed on the screen and also creating an item that the player can walk up to to open that shop along with closing it using the button and also displaying the mouse cursor and all of that good stuff. So in the last video we created the shop interface, the widget blueprint for this. However at the moment there is no functionality and there is no way of actually accessing this and using it within your game and that's what we're going to be doing today. So having said that, what we're going to do then is I'm going to take a moment to explain sort of how the player is going to be able to access that shop and that is by walking up to an actor within the level that is going to say shop and when you walk up to it it's going to open that shop and then the player if they want to they can close that just by pressing the big red X and then just walking away. Now for that we are going to need to create a new blueprint class within our content browser with the type actor and I am just going to give this the name shop underscore actor. And then if I go ahead and double click this, we need to create a couple of elements so the player can see what they're working with and know that it is a shop. So the first thing is just going to be a cube. Now there's not going to be much to the physical side. If you guys want to add a sort of shop uh, store or something in here, you can, but it's not something that I've got any models for at the time at the moment. So we're just going to have a cube. And above this, we are also going to add in a text render component. And then if we move this up, you can see currently it just says text. With this, we're just going to set this to shop here with a exclamation mark. And we're going to make this nice and big. And we are also going to change the color to a nice bright yellow and then we're just going to center it above the cube. If you guys want to add any other components up here in the components panel, um, you guys can do that. It's entirely up to you. But for now, I am happy with how this shop looks. Now, what we will need is a collision volume so that we can create a simple begin overlap event for this. So what I'm going to do is go to add components again. And then this time I'm going to add a box collision. With this, I'm going to make sure this covers the whole of my cube and the text and a little bit more. So as the player approaches this door, it's going to fire off whichever code we are asking it to. So with this now then, we need to get down to the, de down to the dirty and the nitty gritty and start working on this. So in the viewport, if you have your uh, box collision selected, scroll down and move these over and create yourself a begin overlap event. With this, this is going to be an event that's going to fire a bunch of code off after something has begun overlapping with that box. Now for us, that other actor needs to be our character, so we need to cast to the character just like that. And now any code that we put after this is going to be fired when the player begins to overlap with that box collision. So what we're going to do then, first things first, is simply create a widget. So it's going to load the shop interface onto the memory. And then we are also going to add this to the viewport so the player can actually see it on their screen. If we compile this, press play, just using any one of our characters, doesn't matter which, we should be able to see this in action. Of course, we need to place it somewhere in the level. So me, I'm actually going to place it up the top here, just like that, just above the ground and press play. Select my warrior class. And now if I run up to my little shop, you can see it's gonna open this door. Mind you, you'll notice the coins are floating off a little bit and that is because it is not anchored properly, but that's something that we can do. When we walk away, there is no way of getting out of that and we can't really click anything either. So what we need to do is within this shop actor, 
we are going to cast to the third person, uh, sorry, the player controller and just tell it to show the mouse cursor. So set show mouse cursor, set this to true and hook it up. Object wildcard is simply get player controller. Cool. So what we should be able to do now is press play, run up to this, and then we should be able to see our mouse cursor, but the close button still does nothing. So open up your shop interface and with these coins as they was floating before, just make sure all of your items in here are all anchored to the right hand side like we did earlier. For this close button, what we need to do then is scroll all the way down and create an unclicked event for this button. With this, all we're gonna do is start off by getting rid of the mouse cursor. So cast to player controller again and set show mouse cursor, but this time set it to untrue. Object wildcard should be get player controller. And then we are also going to use remove from parent, which is essentially just going to remove the target, which is itself from the screen. So if we compile this, press play, what we should have is a simple little shop that you should be able to walk up to and then walk away or just close it and walk away and we're all good. And we can go back to this as many times as you want. It's entirely up to you. But as of right now, our store is being displayed on the screen here, which is quite nice. Um, also, if you open the inventory in the store at the same time, you'll notice everything is sort of overlapping a little bit. So if you do have that issue, just go ahead and move all of your store elements down a little bit and that should fix any issues you have. Now, what I would say is sort of get this process and this placement down earlier on before you have loads and loads of stuff. But if you open that shop interface, move it down, it's as simple as that, compile it. And let's just quickly try again. So what I'm gonna do is press B to open up my inventory, run up to this, and you can see now the store and the inventory are no longer overlapping, and that's all great. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much everything for this video. In the next video, we are gonna be adding the functionality to check to see whether or not the player has enough coins, and then we're also gonna be checking to see if they've got the inventory space and then place it in the player's inventory. But for now, that is everything. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep curating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.